the membrane potential. What is a membrane potential? So put simply, the membrane potential is a voltage difference between the inside of a cell and the outside of the cell. And for most cells, under most conditions, that voltage is approximately negative 60 millivolts, again, inside the cell compared to outside the cell. The membrane potential is a fundamental feature of all living cells. All cells have a membrane potential. And that membrane potential is used as a source of potential energy to perform work, very often in the form of membrane transport. For a special group of cells called excitable cells, the membrane potential can be changed for the purpose of signaling or changing function. In order to understand how most cells obtain a membrane potential, let's first look at the physical features of a membrane potential in a cell. And what I mean by that is, what does a membrane potential actually look like? So if we were to zoom in on our neuron here to take a closer peek at its membrane potential, we would see something that looks like this. So what we're looking at here is a small segment of its intracellular fluid compartment and extracellular fluid compartment delineated by the presence of its plasma membrane, the lipid bilayer. So it's important to note that for both the intracellular and extracellular fluid compartments that there are dissolved ions and the concentrations of the ions or specifically the amount of charge uh, dissolved in each compartment is equal to each other. In other words, you have an equal number of positive charge as you do negative charge for both the outside and the inside fluids. The membrane potential occurs when there is an uneven distribution of charge between these compartments such that we have more negative charge intracellularly, more positive charge extracellularly. When this occurs, these charges electrostatically interact across the membrane, associating with the membrane, thereby producing an electrical field that is the membrane potential. So how does this uneven distribution of charge occur? There are two requirements to produce a membrane potential in cells. The first is the presence of an ion concentration gradient. In most cases, the ion concentration gradients that exist between the inside and outside of cells are produced by the action of transport proteins. For instance, the sodium potassium pump, which brings in two potassium ions and extrudes three sodium ions per cycle. The second requirement to achieve a membrane potential is the presence of selective ionic permeability. And this is imparted by the presence of ion channels. So ion channels are integral proteins. They span the lipid bilayer, and they allow for selective ionic movement down their electrochemical gradients. In this case, we're looking at a potassium channel that allows potassium to flow from inside the cell to outside the cell down its concentration gradient. So how do these two features give rise to a membrane potential? So let's envision a situation where we have a cell and in the simplified state, we just have a potassium ion and potassium exists in its concentration gradient where there's a high concentration of potassium inside, relatively low concentration of potassium outside. And again, this is due to the activity of the sodium potassium pump. In accordance with the law of electrical neutrality, for every potassium ion that exists in this solution, it needs to be balanced by an equal amount of negative charge. So in this situation, let's imagine that we have also a concentration gradient for this anion, high concentration inside the cell, low concentration outside the cell. If we imagine that this cell, like most cells, has the ubiquitous expression of these leak potassium channels, in this situation, potassium would tend to flow down its concentration gradient from inside the cell to outside the cell. Because the anion also has a concentration gradient, it too would tend to want to flow from inside the cell to outside the cell. But because it lacks a ion channel to be able to travel down its concentration gradient, it is unable to flow across the membrane. So we have this situation where potassium is traveling down its concentration gradient. But for each potassium ion that moves from inside the cell to outside the cell, we gain one net positive charge on the outside and lose one positive charge on the inside. And this would create an instance where we would have an uneven distribution of charge. That is, we're gaining positive charge on the outside and we're accumulating unbalanced negative charge on the inside because, again, its flow is restricted across the membrane. 
This would seem to violate the law of electrical neutrality. But what happens is, in this situation, the excess positive charge on the outside develops an electrostatic interaction across the lipid bilayer with the excess negative charge on the inside. These charges are attracted to each other much the same way as two magnets can exert force across a sheet of paper. The presence of these charges along the lipid bilayer develops an electrical field that is the membrane potential. So when this occurs, this creates a situation where the inside becomes electrically negative compared to the outside. This in turn actually influences the movement of potassium because potassium is positively charged it tends to be attracted to regions that are electrically negative. So the presence of this membrane potential as it's developing generates an electrical pull for potassium that will tend to resist its movement from inside the cell to outside the cell. But if we assume as this is occurring that the concentration gradient still far outweighs the emerging electrical gradient, we can assume that potassium will continue to travel down its concentration gradient, leading to a further accumulation of positive charge outside, negative charge inside. And again, as those charges are accumulating, they associate along the membrane due to those electrostatic interactions, further increasing the membrane potential. And you can imagine that eventually we will reach a situation where we have accumulated sufficient amount of charge to produce a membrane potential that will be strong enough to oppose potassium's tendency to move down its concentration gradient. That is, we have a concentration gradient and a voltage gradient in the form of our membrane potential that are equal and opposite of each other. And at this point, potassium movement is at equilibrium. That is, there is no net movement of potassium. And our cell in this situation had just reached what we'd call its resting membrane potential. So what would the membrane potential actually be for this cell? It depends on the potassium concentration gradient. That is, the stronger the concentration gradient, the greater the voltage gradient that would have to develop to oppose the movement of potassium down that concentration gradient. In other words, the membrane potential of the cell will be the equilibrium potential for potassium. To reiterate, this is how most cells achieve their resting membrane potential. All cells have ionic concentration gradients. And for virtually all, or certainly most mammalian cells, we have a high concentration of potassium inside and a low concentration of potassium outside. And for those cells, due to the presence of leaky potassium ion channels, that is ion channels that only allow the movement of potassium down their electrochemical gradients, you get a net outward movement of potassium, leading to an accumulation of negative charge inside, an accumulation of positive charge outside. Those charges electrostatically interact across the membrane producing our membrane potential.